Yeah. So speed equals, in, equals to momentum basically means that as a property investor, my currency is time. All they want is to get their hands on a deal, but not really understand that what type of financing did I secure to end this deal. So yes. Three, two, one, and we are live. Welcome to my office. <laughs> I think that's how I'm going to start the video. Welcome to my office. Now, this is how I take a book. A book is someone's life experience congested into, let's say, 300 pages. Now, if I'm going through that book and there's life lessons that I'm able to learn from that particular book, that puts me at a better perspective or it gives me better perspective than what that person had at that particular age. So now say for instance, if Nell was writing a book of when he was nine years old and a nine year old reads that book right now, this means that he's able to read through what Nell went through and really understand that how does he position himself in a way whereby it's actually going to be putting him in a better position. So now today, what do we do, man? What are we doing today? Today we're discussing strategic books that are having influence towards our journey right now as property investors. So we're specifically focusing on property investing and we'll be linking these life lessons so it was a chapter from a book or it was a heading from a book that I took so I have two and Lebo also has two but before we really get into that Lebo I want us to really understand when it comes to books we need to be very aware of where the person was coming from because sometimes a person might be coming from a position whereby as you mentioned that we have we all have different phases in life someone can be at the phase whereby I'm still starting out so I still need to fix my credit. Someone can be in a phase whereby I have my dream job and now with that being said, I want to diversify in a sense whereby I want to start now investing. Whereby you can still have someone who's about to retire and now, oh, maybe they retired and now they have all of this cash and they're about to invest. Trust me when I say that all of these people, their experience when it comes to investing, it's gonna to be totally different. So it's very important for us to really understand or to look further than just reading in a sense whereby try to gauge that where was this person because now if i'm reading a book about someone who's made it and then now i just started or i'm about to start and then i want to start buying let's just say 60 units it's going to be really hard mm -hmm. i'm going to be frustrated because this person might say that your freestanding houses it's going to be really tricky to monetize from them so what i'm saying is that buy 60 units and up so now my question is that I feel stuck because I'm asking myself, how will I start my journey with 60 units whereby I do not have that cash? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, do you want to start or should I start? Start, go, okay. go for it. So the first book that I read, right, yeah. it was this one over here. Okay. So this book over here, if I can just get it for the camera. Um, so this book, the title is, is Your Next Five Moves, Moves by Patrick B. David. I mean, just the heading alone already tells you a lot, right? So they say that your average professional chess player knows their next five moves. So now by the time we set up everything, they know which moves they'll be playing. So now what happens most of the time is that we only have one move and we are reacting based on what our opponent is saying. Now, how do we actually implement this and put it into business or into uh, property investing? When I'm investing in a property, I'm investing in a property knowing what this property is doing to my journey. So say for instance right now, if my plan is that I'm going to be owning 150 units, I need to understand that how am I going to get to that 150 units. It is not possible for me to just wake up tomorrow and sign on a deal saying that I want to earn own this 115 units. I have to have that incremental growth or have that step by step way of how do I actually transition to where I am right now to the 150 units. Now, this is my challenge that I want to give to you as a property investor or as an aspiring property investor. What is your goal and how do you plan on getting there? And is it practical for you to get to your goal with the strategy that you're using right now? If you're using a strategy whereby you're saying that you are having a property that's cash flowing 500 on a monthly basis, Understand where do you need to go and how many properties do you need to have in order for you to get to that particular goal. So say for instance, if your pr practical goal right now is 20,000, you'd say 20,000 divided by the 500, right? Which will give you how many properties you'd need to actually own in order for you to get to, 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 to your desired goal. Now, what do you think about when you hear next five moves? 
The next five moves, man. I, I like the fact what I got from you is that we need to be proactive rather than reactive. That's what sets apart beginners from pros. Because now when you're looking at your pro, is that I'm proactive in a sense whereby I'm looking for this type of property that is going to give me this result so that I can get to this place. Whereas when you're looking at it, this is the Zoom meetings. We've had so many Zoom meetings with people out there and we're trying to understand. We only understand where we'd like to be, the place we'd like to be. So we don't understand necessarily the type of property that it should be buying and the type of cash flow that it should be giving me. Hence, it's very frustrating when we sit down with them and then when we're looking at the numbers or we're looking at the strategy, you can clearly see that there is no clear strategy that this is where I am, this is the route that I need to take to get to this place. So what stood out for me there is that you highlighted the importance of us being proactive towards this. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can be proactive is once we start really understanding what does the investor's journey mean for a property investor. Mm -hmm. Because property investing does not only involve me just buying the property and then only seeing that, how do I grow? Mm -hmm. We've had countless lives, even Zoom, whereby somebody's like, gents, I've got four properties on me. But I can't seem to grow to buy the third one or the fourth one, the fifth one, I mean. I've got four properties on me, but I can't seem to buy the fifth one. So it's clear that, yes, there was no separation between the individual and the business. So now it got to a point whereby the affordability got maxed out. And once the affordability is maxed out, there is no the next fifth move. So what we're saying is that know your next five moves. Hmm. No, oh, I, 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 I like I, I like, like how you started it, man. Yeah. Nice, nice, yeah, nice. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a point, right, that he really mentioned that really stuck to me as a property investor, right? When he said that speed is equals to momentum. Yeah. So speed equals in, equals to momentum basically means that as a property investor, my currency is time. How fast can I actually go through one deal and go on to the next deal? Now. I know a lot of people are like, um, I want to really take my time and really understand, is this property the right property for me? Or should I actually buy this property or not? Now, there was a situation that we were in whereby we saw a property on Property24 on a Saturday and we were like, okay, uh, we'll call them on the Monday, right? <laughs> now, on the Sunday morning when we woke up, we were like, let's call them. But at the same time, we're hesitant to actually call them. But later on in the day, at around 12 o'clock, this is when we called them and we were like, okay. We were bored then. We were like, oh, we were bored. We have we're nothing like, to lose. Ah, I have nothing to do, man. <laughs> if, they lose, don't, if, also lose. if they don't answer, then it's not a problem. <laughs> when we called the agent, the person closed on the Sunday morning, right? Now, you can only understand that if we had actually signed on the offer before, on the Saturday, when we saw the deal, if we had actually signed the offer to purchase subject to viewing, at least we would have had our skin in the game. However, now because we delayed, it actually kicked us out of the deal. So now this is something that I want to give to all property investors or make you understand this particular point. Speed is your currency as a property investor. The more you take time, the more you are taking chances so that the deal is going to be sold. And I, I also have a confession. I have a confession. This confess week, now. Confess. This week. So this weekend, we're hosting a property workshop. So one of the estate agents who will be coming through, um, it was more of, she was like, Jens, I've got a property which is way below market value. We said that we're flipping, right? So she knows that we're flipping. Like, Jens, I've got a property which is below market value. Just tell me. So it's, in, it's all the way in Pretoria and we're in Joburg. But we don't mind traveling because we don't believe that a deal is going to be in the next street. So she's like, Jens, I've got a, she texted, Jens, got a property just tell me when you guys are free guess what because of all the stress of clients viewings and also a project that we're busy with it kind of slipped off now when i called her this was monday oh. when i called her yesterday what is yesterday it was tuesday Ye yesterday was tuesday yeah yesterday. Yes it feels like it's, it's already saturday right <laughs> so when i called her yesterday that's this is one day this is one day when i called her yesterday i'm like I remember that you sent me a text about a property that's worth 300,000. It was going for 300,000 300, and you could sell it at about 600,000. Guess what? It was not there anymore. It was not there anymore. So this thing comes back. It hits us again that speed is momentum. Yeah. So, so when you said that it hit home and it's constantly hitting home because we really need to remind ourselves that 
we need to close as soon as possible. But here's the thing as a property investor with speed versus momentum is that you need to make sure that you do your due diligence mm. because it doesn't make sense of us closing every deal that comes through. However, we're not sure of the outcome. So if, as much as we're saying speed is equal to momentum, there also needs to be due diligence that facilitates both. Yeah. No? Yeah. Which one are you speaking about? So the second book that we're speaking about is um, the 90 rules for entrepreneurs. So this is the one. 90 rules for entrepreneurs. Yeah. The reason why I like this one. The reason why I like this one is that it speaks a lot about the mindset. As you can see, this is Marnas. He was Shark Tank, right? Yeah. Shark Tank. He's got uh, one of those globes attached to his hands. I'm hoping one day you're going to be able to pull the stunt off. The globes <laughs> on the... <laughs> yeah. So when it, come, when it came to this one, right, when I was looking at rule number 21, to be specific, it said that understand your numbers. Mm. Now, here's the thing when it comes to understanding your numbers. A lot of us want to become millionaires or a lot of us have this goal that I want to reach 50,000 by the end of year five. Now, what separates people that will hit that target from us just randomly selecting a target is people that know their numbers. Reason being, once I start understanding numbers and once I start opening myself to, you know what, I'm a property investor and I might have not loved maths, I might have not loved balancing, but now I'm forced to. Because at the end of the day, whatever I invest in, it needs to get me to that goal. Because right here, what we're doing is that we're not setting goals that will make people excited. When I'm sitting at the price, then I'm like, Jess, I'm going to be a property mogul. And then they're like, what do you mean property mogul? I'm going to have 20 properties in the next five years. But now the real question is, how will I get there? So if I do not understand the basics of numbers, that's when I can get in trouble. Because property investing involves a whole lot of numbers. Before we even go anywhere, there's something called leveraging. Now, once I get to understand what leveraging means and also debt again, once I understand the power of debt again, I'm able to now position myself that do I really need to take this type of loan for this property? We did mention that there's, there's, over, 20, there's over 20 banks, but now there's also 20 banks that are, that are offering fundings for, for, for property investors, right? But now here's the thing, if I do not understand compound interest, if I do not understand simple interest, now I'm, I'm in a very difficult situation. If I do not understand prime rate or when interest rates are going up, that how does that affect my loan, I'll find myself in trouble. Mm. I've seen this countless time whereby someone is an aspiring property investor, all they want is to get their hands on a deal but not really understand that what type of financing did I secure to end this deal. So yes, you can be in this deal, but only to find out that when it came to your interest that you're charged, it was quite high. So now you really ask yourself again that, was it necessary for me to really take this route or not? Now, you know, you spoke about the, 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 the numbers, right? Yeah. And knowing your numbers. I think a lot of people don't really understand Hi, Wittumelo, and thank you for the roses. Thank you for the roses. I, I wanted to say, appreciate it. I wanted to say hi before I actually started. So <laughs> the numbers are running too much into my head. Now, I want you guys to understand the importance of numbers. A lot of people don't really understand why we're all about numbers and property investing. Because we thinking about, people are thinking about just buy a property and then you'd be okay, right? Now, here's the importance of a number. You have two properties over here. You have property A, you have property B. Property A is actually bigger in size, but now property B is smaller in size. Now, the thing is, how do you justify as a property investor if you should actually purchase property A or property B, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we don't have numbers that are telling us what, we're going to be emotional and we might actually select property A that has a bigger yard. Now, it may have a bigger yard, but now with property B, it's actually renting out for more, right? Now, the thing is, a lot of people go into property investing without understanding that, number one, if I was to purchase the property, how much am I going to be renting it out for, yeah. right? Yeah. Number two, if I was to purchase the property, how much am I able to sell the property for? Now, those are important elements that we really need to understand before we purchase the property. Then you need to understand what are your expenses for that particular property. Now, if you're looking at property A and property B, so we said property A has a bigger yard, property B has a smaller yard, right? 
Now, say for instance, property A is in an estate. Property B is not in an estate. Now, you find out that your expenses are more than your income on property A. However, on your property B, your income is more than your expenses, meaning that you have a profit on property B. Mm. This basically means that even though the yard space on property A is actually bigger, property B actually makes more sense for you as a property investor. Now, as a property investor, I don't, I'm not concerned in terms of the yard space and all everything like that. What I want to know is that for every one rent that I'm putting into this property, how much am I getting in return? Now, if the returns don't really make sense, or if I can't actually run my numbers and know what is my ROI and how my money or how hard it, my money is actually working for me, that becomes hard for me to determine if I should actually be investing in this property or not. Now, that's why I'm saying that numbers are really important because you're able to then say that is this a property is this property right for you to invest in once you understand your numbers you're good in property investing so i'd urge people again stop buying because you saw somebody's face on an advert stop buying because a friend bought eight of them make it make sense for you and that goal that you want to achieve and the only way you can do that is through understanding your numbers so if you want more of this and understanding or full breakdown of this is that we're hosting a property workshop on the 1st of, of April. So please make sure, please make sure that you come through because it's going to be epic. The things that we'll be speaking about are really profound when it comes to us as property investing. How do we position ourselves into this market now? So if you want the link, you can go to our bio and then it will be there.